Hey, what's up guys? This is Yunus, and in this video, I want to show you the quick overview of how to use vectors in C++. So very first thing that you want to do to use the vectors, you need to include the library. So you're going to hashtag include, and it has the same name, just a vector. So we'll call it a vector. So to create a vector, well, first you need to think of what type of vector do you want to create? Um, do you want it to be the vector of uh, integers, vector of strings or doubles or whatever it is? So in our case, we're going to create a vector of integers. So you need to call vector. Then you have an arrow. And inside of these two arrows, you need to specify what type you want your vector to be. And we'll say we want it to be integer. And we're going to call it um, my vector maybe. So let me briefly explain what vector is. So the vector is pretty much um, uh, an array, the dynamic array that is already pre-built and comes with the library and comes with a lot of useful functions. Uh, the size of the array, the size of the vector expands automatically. So you don't have to manage that. So every time when you add an element, it will expand automatically. It's dynamic. Um, so it's better to use vectors than uh, arrays because if you want to use array, you need to write all those functions like expand, shrink by yourself. But vectors comes with it, so it's pretty useful. So the very first thing, let's um, let me show you how to add a number to the vector. So if you want to add a number to a vector, you need to write the name of the vector. You need to do dot. And the keyword for adding the number is push back. And inside of the parentheses, we need to send a number that we want to add. Let's say I want to add five. So this way, every time when you add a number, it's going to add the new number at the end of the vector. So it's going to be sort of like a stack. Um, and let's say I want to Let's add 10 more numbers. So I'm going to create a for loop that loops 10 times. And I'm going to do my vector dot push back. And let's push i every time. Or even i times i. And let's remove this one. So this way, um, it's going to add 10 different numbers. So now, if you want to display the content of the vector, um, we're going to create another for loop. So i equals 0. You know that vector right now has 10 numbers. But let's say you don't know how many numbers in the vector is. So you can do this. You can do my vector dot size. This way, this one is going to return you the size of the vector. And it's going to loop. 10 times in this case. And now, let's do C out. To get an element from the vector, you need to write the name of the vector, and you need to do dot, at, parentheses, and you need to pass the position inside of that parentheses, and we're going to pass i. So it's going to print all the elements from the vector. So let's build and run this and see what will happen. All right, as you can see, um, it does square roots, I guess, uh, not the square roots, uh, squares of numbers from zero till nine. And see the first we added those, then we're displaying all of those. If you want to display specific number at specific position, you can do my vector dot at, for example, five, and it's going to display you the fifth number. So now let's say you want to, um, let's do this so it doesn't take too much space. So now let's say you want to clear your vector. So to remove all the numbers from the vector, you need to do my vector dot clear. This is going to remove all the numbers or whatever the type of the vector you have. It's going to remove all the elements. So let's display it after. 
So as you can see, it displayed the, this one. And since we cleared it, it automatically shrinks the size and the size became zero. So it didn't even go into this one because it was zero less than zero, which is not true. So clear, clear is the vector. Another useful thing is, let's say if you want to remove one element at a time, to remove one element, you need to do my vector dot erase parentheses. Then you need to start from the beginning of your vector. So you're going to do my vector dot begin. So my vector dot begin is going to give you the very first element, but you need to, and well, let's say you want to remove fifth element. So to do that, you can just do my vector dot begin plus four. If you do this, it's going to remove the fifth number. So let's display before and after remove. And actually, let's add end line there so it's not crowded. All right, as you can see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And on this one, see, we removed 16 because it was fifth number inside of the vector. And there are many useful functions that come with the vector library. So I can show you one more. So let's say you want to display the very first element from the vector. So you can do my vector dot front. So this is going to return the very first element from the vector, which is a zero. And you can do back, which is going to return the last one. And if you're interested to learn more about the vectors, there are a lot of useful resources online um, that will explain all the possible functions and what they do. But in this one, we covered the, the basic fundamental ones that's going to be used the most. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.